Good morning, Calvary, and happy Tuesday. It's Pastor Chad here with your word for the day, and uh, we're in Mark chapter 2. Before I get to the text, uh, how many of you remember blue laws? Blue laws, if you're not familiar with that term or that concept, uh, blue laws were laws that were passed uh, throughout our country uh, in the, uh, uh, I'd say long ago, but they, a lot of them just uh, expired recently, that uh, prohibited certain economic activities on Sundays. So for instance, uh, you couldn't buy alcohol before noon or one or two o'clock on a Sunday. Uh, you couldn't uh, open a, a retail store until afternoon on Sunday. You, some of them weren't even allowed to be open at all on Sundays. And, and it, the idea behind Blue Laws was to restrict activity so that you could encourage or enforce church attendance. Uh, and, and in some places where uh, they were Adventists, where they were actually uh, heavily Jewish communities or heavily Adventist communities, it was on Saturday. They wouldn't let you do things on Saturday, so you could have to go to church, or at least you couldn't do anything while church was going on. And uh, I just want you to know that those blue laws, that idea of trying to force people into church or enforce the, the idea of Sabbath, has been around for thousands of years. Our text today is Mark chapter 2. I'm looking at the passage beginning in verse 23. And, and here's the account. It says, One Sabbath, uh, as Jesus was going through the grain fields, a a as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. They were hungry, and they were grabbing a snack on the way. Uh, and the Pharisees were saying to Jesus, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And Jesus said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need and was hungry? He and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God in the time of Abiathar, the high priest, and ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat. And he also gave it to those who were with him. And this is the key point right here. And then Jesus said to him, to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. So the, the setting is real simple. Uh, Jesus and his disciples are walking through a grain field. The disciples are hungry. They grab a snack. Uh, they're doing the grain in their hands like this and then eating it. The Pharisees said, that breaks the laws of the Sabbath. What law are they talking about? Well, you know, we all know that in the Ten Commandments, Jesus, uh, Jesus uh, the, the Fifth Commandment is remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Uh, the Israelites were told to not do any work at all on the seventh day. They were to take it as a day of rest and a day of, of focusing on worship of God, and they were not to work, they were not to try and do all the things they did the other days of the week to honor God and to bless them. And, uh, and, but by the time of Jesus, they had created all these explanations of what it meant to uh, remember the Sabbath. And, and, and they just had item after item, and we'll talk more about this because there's a whole lot more incidences where Jesus clashes with the Pharisees about the Sabbath. But uh, what I wanted to, to just point out is, is that the Sabbath for the Jews was an incredibly strong point of identity. It set them apart from every other nation, which was God's purpose in giving them the, the rules for the Sabbath. But it was an, as a point of identity. We are Sabbath keepers. We are the people of God. It was also a point of religious control. Uh, because they learned early on they, they could mandate what people could and couldn't do on the Sabbath, and so you got to set the rules and you got to control people by the rules because it was a societal-wide uh, understanding of Sabbath. And then finally, the Sabbath became a point of conflict because Jesus kept clashing with the Pharisees, and, and this is uh, one of the first ones recorded in the Gospel of Mark. And uh, because Jesus said, look, uh, I want you to change your understanding. Man was not created to honor the Sabbath, the Sabbath was created to bless people. That, that's a huge shift because the, the Pharisees at the time were saying, hey, you have to keep the Sabbath because you were created to honor God through keeping the Sabbath. And Jesus just turned that on its head and said, no, you don't, you don't understand how God works. God created the Sabbath to bless us. So what kind of blessing is there in the Sabbath? Uh, well, the Sabbath is for us to pause and worship God. To recognize that he's the creator, that he's the redeemer, that he's the one who's in control, and that everything we have that is good, he gave us. We need to have a time in our lives, a regular time, to say, God, I'm stopping and remembering you. This, the Sabbath is also a pause from work. See, our, our 
tendency, our idolatry, is to become workaholics because we're trying to provide for ourselves. And look, a work ethic is a great gift to have, and God says that we're to work for six days. Most of us are aiming for less than that, but we're to work for six days, and then we're to rest. God wants to bless us by giving us rest from our labors, uh, to give us rest, to refresh our bodies physically and mentally, rest to enjoy our families. And then the Sabbath is to bless us personally and the community uh, as a whole, in the case of Israel, because it is an expression of trust in God. The other nations around Israel, they're working seven days a week because they're trying to gain things and, and store up things and store up for themselves. And God specifically gave the Sabbath to say, trust me. Show me that you trust me by taking a break. Show, the, show me that you trust me by worshiping me instead of working harder to try to gain, get ahead. Let me bless you and you demonstrate that trust in me. So that's the purpose of the Sabbath. It was made to bless us, not the other way around. Now, every time I talk about Sabbath, people say, but yeah, but what about, you know, why aren't we worshiping on Saturdays? By the way, we do have a Saturday night service, five o'clock. You're welcome to come at our Sweetwater campus. Uh, but uh, why aren't we worshiping on Saturdays? Why do we worship on Sundays? Here's the thing. Uh, the day doesn't matter. The day doesn't matter. Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And, and the specific day doesn't matter. It mattered to the Israelites because they were a nation unto God. But for those of us who are the people of God, we can worship God whenever we choose to. We can take Sabbath whenever we choose to. The Apostle Paul wrote about this extensively in Colossians chapter 2. I'd encourage you to read that and do some study on your own if that's an issue for you. But, uh, but it really isn't about the day or the way. It's the purpose of the Sabbath. And here's the thing. God wants to bless you. He wants to bless you to give you a, a pause to worship, a pause to rest, and a pause to express your faith in Him. So uh, how are you doing Sabbath today? How are you doing Sabbath in your life? Uh, because if you're not, you need to. And, and if your whole life is nothing but a Sabbath, uh, by that I mean just you're just indulging yourself and not working and doing stuff like that, then God's calling you to serve because it's just supposed to be one day a week that we set aside from work and the rest of the time we're supposed to be serving God. So uh, I pray that you are having a Sabbath for your souls and I pray that you realize that God designed that and every one of his other laws to bless you and not to curse you. Have a great day, Calvary. God bless.